Welcome to wild and wonderful West Virginia, home of the Cass Scenic Railroad State Park. I'm Eric. For my 50th birthday, my wife is sending me on a two-week adventure to see as many steam locomotives as I can. But I'm not taking this trip alone. I'll be joined by my son Carson and our good friend Chris. Now, Chris and I have both worked in the tourist railroad industry for many years. So along the way, we're going to catch up with some old friends and meet some new ones. We're going to get some special behind-the-scenes access into things that most people don't normally see, and also offer insight into the complicated machinery of steam locomotives and the world of tourist railroading. So join us on this epic adventure where each day brings a new discovery. The entire town of Cass was built by the West Virginia Pulp and Paper Company in order to harvest red spruce from that mountain up there, Cheat Mountain. The town was built around, uh, I believe, 1900 or 1901. I think 1900 is when they started building. A railroad was built to reach the timber areas and bring the logs down to a sawmill along the Greenbrier River. The track that runs right here in front of the station was the Chesapeake and Ohio Greenbrier branch. It came up from, I think, Marysville that way and came up to Cass and then connects to Durban at a Western, uh, with a connection with the Western Maryland in Durban up that way. Then the town of Cass was built with a line going up here and to the left to go up to Cheat Mountain in order to ha harvest the timber. In order to tackle the steep grades, sharp curves, and rough track up on the mountain, special locomotives were needed. Built by the Lima Locomotive Works and named after their original designer, the Shays proved reliable and efficient for working deep in the woods. Shays were the most abundant of the geared type of steam locomotives. Three pistons mount vertically on the side of the boiler. Instead of being connected directly to the drive wheels like on a conventional locomotive, they instead turn a crankshaft that runs down the outside of the locomotive. The crankshaft has a series of gears which are connected to the drive wheels, which are located in assemblies called trucks. Again, on a conventional steam locomotive, the drive wheels are mounted rigidly to the frame, which makes it difficult for the engine to negotiate tight curves. But on a Shea, the trucks can pivot independently from the boiler in the frame. Because of this, geared locomotives can traverse much tighter curves and rougher track. Since every wheel is a drive wheel, which is smaller in diameter and driven through a gear reduction from the cylinders versus a rod locomotive, Shays have tremendous tractive power and a good power to weight ratio. 
but to gain these advantages, they sacrifice speed. Top speed on a Shea is just a little over 10 miles per hour. All logging operations and cash shut down for good in 1960, and the entire town and railroad were turned over to the state of West Virginia to create Cass Scenic Railroad State Park. Since 2015, the railroad has been operated by the Durban and Greenbrier Valley Railroad, under contract with the park system. So, Cass, West Virginia is an old logging town. One of the things about visiting Cass is exploring the old logging town that's now part of the state park. And they have the old company houses that you can rent as they have turned them into cabins that you can rent when you stay here. And so that's one of the exciting things about coming here is being able to stay and check out these old cabins. So we rented one of these, these old company houses. So let's go inside and explore it and see what it's like. Well, we got in late last night and it was too late in order to do a walkthrough. So we've already kind of settled in a little bit. So this is showing us the next morning after we've already kind of settled in. And uh, so we've got some of our provisions. They have a full kitchen set up. So we stopped at a grocery store on the way into town to be able to pick up some provisions. There is a restaurant at the company store and they provided us a menu. Side of the porch, back porch, right here. <clears throat> and being a state park, of course, you've got to have your typical campground style grill, picnic table. Now, one thing I've noticed in here um, is the walls, other than that mirror right there, the walls are pretty. There, there is no wall decorations. I don't know if that's intentional um, because that's what they th think that it would have been like back in the day or if um, they just haven't got around to decorating. Oh, and there's one picture of the town here by the door. Oh, emergency fire ladder. So there's three bedrooms. This one has a double bed. Then we've got two rooms with twin beds. So the house sleeps six and you have to walk through the middle bedroom or that one, two bedrooms to get to the other bedroom. This is Carson's room. I won't quite show you all of his stuff, but uh, two beds here. Can you imagine having a family of six, you know, four kids or something in a house, in this house? You know, I guess it's not bad, but not the most spacious. But again, all the walls are, are empty. There's nothing there. And the bathroom, the bathroom's been redone. It's actually kind of cute. More modern shower. Yeah, there we go, a little more light. So, cute house. <clears throat> One of the things about visiting Cass is there is no cell service within 50 miles because of the Green Bank Observatory. Radio Observatory is right next door and cell service will interfere with the science that they're doing. So if you're trying to use Google Maps in order to navigate your way here, you're kind of out of luck. So luckily we had the good old Rand McNally to help us out. We are here. We are at Cass Scenic Railroad in West Virginia. We got here super late last night. And 
and this is what we're going to be seeing today. Shays, geared engines, going up huge mountainous grades, all standard gauge. And it's going to be great. <laughs> Today we're taking the classic trip to the top of Bald Knob. At 4,843 feet, it's the third highest point in West Virginia and only 21 feet shy of the tallest. It's also the highest point east of the Mississippi reached by Standard Gauge Railroad. To get there, the 11 mile line will climb 2,390 feet over grades up to 9% and traverse two switchbacks. This is my fifth time at Cass, and it will be my fourth time going to Bald Knob. My last trip was in 2005. But of all those previous visits, there are still some things that I've never gotten to do. One of those is to visit the Cass shops. Now, I didn't see anything on their website about shop tours, so I thought I'd inquire at the ticket counter. They directed me to the visitor center, where there was a woman named Tammy working. Apparently, I was not the only one asking, so she called the shop and asked if she could bring a group down for a quick tour, and they said it was fine. Now, it was a quick visit since we had to be back in time to catch our train up the mountain at noon, but we did get to see the Climax number 9 and the largest Shea in existence, the Western Maryland number 6. The Big Six, as it's often called, was just being finished from its federally mandated boiler inspection, and its anticipated arrival back in the opening fleet was generating a lot of excitement. It's also the last Shea ever built, and at 150 tons, the second largest outshopped by Lima. Although I've never ridden behind this locomotive, I did get to see it in operation back in 2005. Now you're going to notice that the Climax No. 9 looks a little different than the Shea, although still a geared steam locomotive. I've got a video on my channel to explain the difference between the three main types of geared steam locomotives, and you can find the link in the description. Number 5 is an 80-ton Shea built in 1905. It's the oldest Shea at Cass and has worked in and around Cass its entire life. Number two is a Pacific Coast Shea, built in 1928. Pacific Coast Shea's were designed to compete with the Willamette Iron and Steel Works of Portland, Oregon, who also built geared locomotives very similar to the Shea's built by Lima. Pacific Coast Shea's had several advancements, such as superheaters, an all-weather steel cab, and a better designed frame. over full and so it's just it's lost out they got our locomotive today is number 11 former feather river number no. three built in 1923 it's classified as a 90 ton three truck shea she is the second largest shea on the cast roster Number 11 is also listed as having a tractive effort of 40,000 pounds. Compare that to Grand Canyon Railway number 29, which has 48,000 pounds of tractive effort, but weighs 180 tons. So, number 11 has nearly equivalent pulling power at half the weight. We just finished up with the shop tour. And we got some, and I got some, uh, some snacks for the trip. They gave us some food. Looks like some sort of build your own burger sandwich, and there's macaroni salad in there. I think that'll be pretty good.
This creek is called Leather Bark Run. We are going to follow the drainage for this creek most of the way up the mountain. So we've reached the first switchback. The mountainside has become too narrow and too steep for the tracks to go any farther in this direction, so we're going to switch directions and follow this track on the left. Even a sure-footed Shea can slip once in a while.
reach the second switchback. Now we get to change direction again. This spot here is called Whitaker. The railroad does offer shorter rides that end here. Then they let you off to check out the old lumbering equipment. But our train still has a long way to go. So, some of the trains only come up here and then they turn around, they let you out, turn around and go back. This train, we're gonna keep on going. We still got another, like, miles or something. Track to the left used to be the main for many years. It went to a lumber camp called Spruce. The lumberjacks would stay here when they were working in the woods so they didn't have to go all the way back to Cass each night. So that's the line to Old Spruce and Spruce that connects to the West Maryland line to Elkins. And that's Cassianic Railroad's only connection to the outside world. Steam locomotives use a lot of water. We're going to stop here at a creek called Oats Run to top off the tender. Shays are equipped with a steam siphon that can be used like a straw to suck up the water instead of using a regular pump or water tower.
Oh, well, that's how you know it's full. Yeah, should I try and put a little bit more in there? <laughs> Top it off? Rocket, get the bubbles out. <laughs> this is an 8% grade. Yeah. It's going to be fun to see the engine get started off of here. It's got to take a little bit of practice. As soon as these guys get back up to the front. Huh? Well, now it's full of water, so at least it'll help give us some traction. All right, the conductor's up to the front. Should we get going here in a minute? Brake set while well, uh, <clears throat> sitting on the grade. That was smart. Yeah, the forest has changed, so now this is the red spruce that we're seeing instead of the deciduous trees. That's why the line was built, was to harvest the red spruce. So mile post nine, the Y should be right up here. And then it says that we're supposed to actually have like a one and a half percent downgrade. Grade is actually definitely lessened. And look at all the moss. Just a carpet of green. Yeah, here we go, here's the Y. This is the only Y on the bald knob line. It's not used very often. Yeah, that's a pretty sharp curve. Yeah, so I think the main, the track on the main where we're at is the sharpest curve on the railroad. And it's pretty sharp. I mean, that's a tight Y.
the approach to Bald Knob is one of the steepest on the line, at 9%. Here we are, bald knob. We made it to bald knob. There isn't really too much here. It's mainly picnic tables. Oh, and there's a viewing platform though. That's cool. This is bald knob, the third highest point in West Virginia. The view today is somewhat hazy and the people here are saying that it's from all the forest fires in Canada right now. The train will stay here about 30 minutes and give us time to take in the view before heading back down the mountain. Yeah, it says cash should be to the right. Is that okay. the big or the big, uh, yeah, that's the, dish, yeah. yeah, that sa satellite dish, that's part of the radio astronomy observatory. That's Green Bank. Yeah, it's not a clear day. You need a filter. You need a fog filter. They all get to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Make a million dollars. You could actually get that vista there. Uh huh. Like it's supposed to look. Yeah. I am definitely going to come up here again once, once that, that canopy business is done. Well, if you're thinking about how a train can come down such steep grades and maintain a safe speed, there are actually several different methods that can be applied. With modern diesel locomotives, you would use the dynamic brake, which uses the electric drive motors to generate electricity, which then is routed through a large resistor to create a braking force. Some steam railroads use a device called a water brake, which basically allowed you to safely use your steam pistons as compressors, which created a retarding force. Most steam railroads use air brakes and retainers, which allow you to maintain a certain amount of air pressure in the brake cylinders on each car all the time. But here, they go old school. There's a conductor and a brakeman on the train, and they adjust the hand brakes on the cars to balance the braking force with the grade of the track. The engineer will give them signals, basically a thumbs up or thumbs down, when he wants more or less brake. Of course, he still has the regular air brakes to supplement, but the use of the hand brake allows him to recharge the air at various intervals.
coming up to the switchback. Yep. So we'll go up here past the switch, we'll stop, and then we'll go down that track. This time the engine will be in the back instead of being in the front. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That'd be one heck of a ride to just gravity run. I'd do it. You just ride the handbrake. handbrake back there. I feel like I watched a video recently on this and somebody said what it was and I don't forget. Because he's dropping water from the... Oh, it's wet all the way up there, huh? Yeah. Is that for the water lubrication system? Yeah, maybe. Yes, the right. 
Under these tarps are another Climax, more Keppo number three, and Cass Heisler number six. When I rode in 2005, we had a larger train going up to Bald Knob, and it required two locomotives. Shea number two was the road engine, and Heisler number six was the helper. When we returned, we drove to nearby Durban to ride the Durban rocket. It was pulled by Climax number three. So we rode behind all three of the main types of geared locomotives in the same day. I love spending time in West Virginia. There is a certain peacefulness and tranquility here in the solitude that can be found deep in the hollers of the Appalachian Mountains. With several hours still of daylight left and after several days of car riding, Chris and I both felt that a nice evening stroll along the old right-of-way would do us good enveloped in the fresh mountain air and the sounds of the babbling Greenbrier River. Somehow we managed to convince Carson that it would be good for him as well. Another one over there. There's one in the water.
awesome. Yeah. Big old bluffs. Cliff faces up there. Walking through the damp woods. Babbling brook on the side. This has been an awesome day. Since we're at the halfway point of our adventure, this seems a good time to reflect on all the amazing things we have seen so far, especially today's epic ride up the mountain. This is the first destination on the trip where I knew more about than Chris, as he's only been here once previously, and briefly at that. So Chris, have you enjoyed Cass? Cass, as usual, has knocked it out of the park. It's been had an amazing day. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. Are you ready to leave? No, not yet. So what are, where are we going tomorrow? More cast. More cast. All right. <laughs> Got a fever. The only prescription is more cast. <laughs> more cast. <laughs> Tomorrow, we're going to go to Durban on a new line that just opened. That's going to be awesome. <laughs>